Well, I used to speak five languages. That's Hungarian, followed by Russian, followed by German, followed by English, followed by Hebrew. But I forgot my Russian now. If you don't use it, you lose it. I was born Jewish. My grandmother who brought me up was an Orthodox Jew. She was a lovely, lovely person and I loved her very much. Then I lived with my aunt, but I was the black sheep in the family. I wanted to learn things. I loved education, I loved school. They were not interested in all those things. So I went to live on a kibbutz. As a child, my granny made all my decisions for me. As a young adult, my aunt made all the decisions for me. The kibbutz then made all the decisions for me. And I said, when am I going to make my own life? So I left the kibbutz and I came to Scotland. Inverness was in the 70s much smaller than it is today. It has changed now, but I grew old here and I got used to it. I suppose people got used to me. Well, you wanted to see pictures. My granny kept them. That's the only reason I have them. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's a small child. Had very long hair, two huge plaits. And that was my mother and my father on their wedding day. In 1930-something, I don't even know the date. My father was probably an accountant. I don't know for sure. I think that my mother was a housewife. I never knew my parents. My father was taken into slave labor when I was a baby. My mother, my brother and my sister were all killed in Auschwitz. My father never came back. Nobody knows where he died, when he died, or how he died, and nobody will ever know. That's my brother and me. The only reason I know his age when he died was because there is a date on the back of the picture. I've got the pictures of my brother, not of my sister. She never had a picture. My father didn't even know he had another daughter. I was stolen out of the Munkaj ghetto as a toddler and was brought up by my maternal grandmother and my aunt. They realized that there was something wrong, very, very wrong. They paid somebody, a Christian man, and he went to try to get us out from the ghetto. The idea was to get my brother out. He was nine years old by that time. I was saved by mistake because my brother was ill at the time, so he couldn't go. So he took me out instead. And then he went back a week or 10 days later to get him out. By that time, there was nobody left. Have you ever heard about the idea of survivor's guilt? I survived. But I shouldn't have survived. It should have been my brother who should, who should have survived. I don't think I can ever forgive myself for being the one who survived. It's not that I don't think about it every day. 
It's not my fault. I realize it's not my fault. Nothing is my fault. But my brother should have survived, not me. I'm just not a religious person by nature. But there is a prayer that I say six times a year. It's called Yiskor, which means remember. And it's to remember not just my parents, but to all the Jews who were killed over the history 